each high roller gets three provisionals throughout the year. They also get an extra one during the midweek money series as well. So now just two provisionals left for Crouch and Morrell. Pace truck is set to pull off. East Bay Raceway Park, we got them racked, we got them stacked, and we've got the grandstands packed. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green. Kyle Larson jumps out. Well, we got one around on the front straightaway. The 26 of Zeb Wise facing the wrong direction in a very peculiar position in turn number one. Zeb Wise lined up in the 12th position for the start of this feature event and somehow spins out in front of the entire field and does not get hit by anybody else. Great avoidance by these drivers. Middle portion of this field towards the back to miss him as we'll take a look at a comp cams replay here in just a moment. Here we go on the start. You see Zeb Wise back there with Ryan Timms and Corey Eliason got a great start on the outside and went around Zeb Wise. And I don't think Zeb was expecting that. Corey's left rear clips Zeb's right front and he went around. No damage to the 26 as he will get fired back off and he'll catch the tail of the field. So no laps complete here in this 25 lapper. It's still Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet from the front row. And we've got Tanner Thorson and Colt Macedo in row number two. Rico Abreu and Justin Peck in row number three with Sam Haverteep Jr. Anthony Macri in row four. Parker Price Miller in row five alongside the number five T of Ryan Timms. Here we go, let's try it again. Nice even start up front. Look at Cole Nassino to the inside of Brad Sweet. Takes the second spot immediately as Kyle Larson starts the driveway. Justin Peck around the outside. And Peck started back in sixth. He's in second by turn three. Justin Peck, sixth to second on lap number one. The Boot Motorsports 13 looking sporty early on in this one. Brad Sweet losing positions left and right. Just lost another one to Tanner Thorson. Thorson's up to fourth. Cole Nassino up to third. Caution's out. We got one around in turn one. That is Chris Windham. Chris Windham around in turn number one, the driver of the Vermeer Motorsports number 55. Oh, problem here for Kevin Newton. He's got a flat left rear tire, it looks like, and Newton here is on the front stretch trying to pull into the work here. He does not make it all the way there. There might be some more damage. So we get our first look there at the Frozen Farmer. They're calling it the Pig Pint or the Choose Cone off of turn number four. Frozen Farmer, another one of the many partners involved with High Limit this year, and they are the Choose Cone sponsor or the Pick Pint. Tony, what's going on down there? Blade Kern's telling me it's actually something maybe in the steering Chris Wyndham is complaining about, and then Kevin Newton pulls in, and they've got a left rear ready to go on that car as uh, he hits the work area. Thank you very much, Tony, and we'll see if Chris Wyndham is able to rejoin. As Kevin Newton, I can see that car from here getting jacked up, and we'll see if they can get that left rear repaired on the 16 at TH. A big day yesterday for Kevin Newton when he locked in through the heat race. He was extremely excited. A very, uh, very good interview down there on the front straightaway. Hey, Tony, what's up? Uh, they were pushing Chris Windham off, uh, Chase, and as soon as the Jeep started to roll, Chris signaled him to stop. The steering wheel is actually in his lap right now, so it is something with the steering on this Vermeer 55. They're trying to bolt it in right now. Not a good start to the High Limit Racing season for Chris Windham. If they cannot get that car fixed up, the steering wheel looks to be back on. Now it's back off as Clinton Boyles runs back in there to try and make repairs. And it looks like either they did or they called it quits. And it looks like Kevin Newton might be ready to come back onto the racetrack. Tony? Yeah, Chase, it was just a quick bolt onto that left rear, but uh... They're trying to find out exactly what they can do with the 55. They've got the push Jeep pushed back away from Chris doesn't know that. He's signaling, trying to get him to give him a shove. Kevin now is talking to Blade Kearns. I'm not close enough to hear what they said, but Blade uh, not happy, and it looks like the 55 will not be going back out. Well, Kevin Newton does make repairs. His car is back to full strength. And yes, that is the power up so sound from Mario, okay, uh, and here comes Chris Windham as well as he makes his way back onto the racetrack as well. And so repairs have been made to both of those drivers. 
Kevin Newton and Chris Windham will rejoin at the tail of the field. Yeah, apologies, Chase. They, they looked like they were walking away from the 55 and they weren't going to get him back out. But I think maybe it was just an issue of making sure Newton got back out first because the 55 needed additional time. But, but obviously the best news is both Kevin Newton and Chris Windham are back on track. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the updates down there, Tony. Here we go. Coming back to the green. One lap in, 24 to go. Kyle Larson and Justin Peck will lead us back to green. A little bit of a stack up there on the start. Fabrico Abreu kind of bottles everybody up. Look at Tanner Thorson now trying to look to the inside of Justin Peck for the second spot. Thorson slips back into third as they work back into turns three and four. Rico Abreu, big move back behind them to try and get by Anthony Macri. Abreu can't make the pass. Macri drives around on the outside, maintains the sixth position right behind the 49 of Brad Sweet. Tanner Thorson now up into the third spot, gets by Cole Macedo down the back straightaway. Tanner Thorson looking extremely strong here. The first night of the season with the Highlander Racing Series. Now Brad Sweet puts a move on Cole Macedo, move him to the fourth spot. Macedo crosses back to the inside, takes it right back away from the five-time outlaw champion. Now Macedo slams the door right in Brad Sweet's face and says, oh, and they get together a little bit there. Sweet nearly goes around. Now Sweet's going to lose another spot. Here comes Anthony Macri. Macri underneath the 49 into turn number one. Anthony Macri takes away the fifth spot. Brad Sweet right back underneath him, down the back straight away. Justin Peck right there with Kyle Larson. Not close enough to make a move, but he's maintaining the pace of the Silver Motorsports 57. Anthony Macri back underneath of Brad Sweet, who gets a little bit sideways in turn number two. That's going to give that fifth position to the 39M as they work into turn three. Top of the tracks where you want to be at right now, specifically down in turns one and two, as Larson now works at the tail end of the field. First car he will encounter is a 16T of Kevin Newton. Good race going on for about seventh as Corey Day makes his way by the 15H of Sam Hayford Team Jr. The next car in his path is the 24 Rico Abreu as they work down the front straightaway. Tanner Thorson closing in now, and Justin Peck. Larson goes to the bottom in three and four. Might open up the lane here for the 13 of Justin Peck. Peck closing in down the front straightaway. Justin Peck now three car lengths behind the 57 of Larson as they work down the back straightaway. Two cars side by side in front of Larson. He's going to get a little banana splitty right there between Connor Morrell and Chris Windham. Great move right there in traffic from Kyle Larson. Larson, great move to get by two cars and now Peck has to do the same. Peck gets into Chris Windham and Peck's front end is broken. Windham and Peck got together and Justin Peck's front end is folded up in turn three. Wow. Justin Peck had the fishing pole out. He was reeling in Kyle Larson, trying to get to the outside of Chris Windham. They get together. And Justin Peck's front end is folded up. He will have to take that car to the work area. Tony, what's going on? It looks like Wyndham made his way back to the work area as well. Tony, what do you got? Yeah, Wyndham's back in. Clint Boyles and Blade Kearns quick in the cockpit. Uh, this is Vermeer 55. The steering wheel once again off uh, in Chris Wyndham's lap. Clint Boyles quick to work here. They got the impact gun out. They're going to work. All I can really get out of Blade and these guys is that it's the bolt that runs right through and holds the wheel on. So Chris out there battling, it seems like, uh, Chase, with not even the best feel in his hands. He's able to come back in and they're working on it again. Thank you very much, Tony, as they're still trying to get the 13 adjusted Peck hooked up to the wrecker. And that is unfortunate to see there as we take a look at the comp cams replay. Peck is trying to make his way around the outside of Chris Windham, who's battling with Connor Morrell. Windham has no idea that Justin Peck is coming. And Peck, man, that is tough right there. Right rear over the left front. The right rear will win every single time. Folds up the front end on the 13 car. And we'll see if they're able to make repairs. It looks like the 55 of Wyndham is going to make his way back onto the speedway here. We'll see if Peck can do the same. So two high rollers involved in that incident right there with the 13 and the 55. They can't get that thing fixed up right now. They're going to have a little bit of work to do before we get back on the track later on for hot laps. Well, that's the thing, Chase, exactly. That's what a couple of crew guys told me. Uh, Joe Mooney from Anthony Macri made a great point. Hey, we're not chasing a championship with high limit here, so if we have to sit out the second feature night, we don't want to, but we can. Justin Peck, on the other hand, does not have that leisure. Definitely does not. As We've got, uh, what, 16 laps to go here in this one. We've made nine total laps in this High Limit Racing Series A main event. Kyle Larson has led the entire way. Very, very impressed right now with the 88 car of Tanner Thorson running in second. 
third spot is Cole Macedo. Fourth is Anthony Macri. Fifth is Brad Sweet. Seventh is Rico Abreu. Eighth is Corey Day. Ninth, Sam Hafer Team Jr. And in tenth, it is Tyler Courtney. Actually, tenth is going to be the five of Spencer Bates, and Courtney is in the ninth position. So still work continuing to go on for the Duke Motorsports number 13. I can hear him uh, hitting him with the impact gun, but the lights are going out here, Tony. Chase, yeah, running out of time down here for the 13th. Uh, going to see if these guys can make it back out, but I think a really interesting point, Adam, our RF camera guy, has given you guys a good look. Something very interesting to think about is when that car dug in on the left front corner, lots of dirt, lots of debris, even a tear-off is up in between the rock screen and the radiator that that rock screen protects. So that's been another thing that's taken these guys' time if they have to get that total, that radiator totally cleaned out, ready to go. Thank you very much, Tony. As we go back to green, 16 to go, and Tanner Thorson, it's a great restart right there. Will we see a slider to turn number one? Yes, we do. Thorson can't get there in time. Kyle Larson drives around on the outside. Larson still with the lead. Thorson made a big move right there. Couldn't quite make it happen. Race is on for third. Here comes Brad Sweet underneath the Cole Mosquito down the front straightaway. Mosquito drives away, and now Sweet's working on the 39M of Anthony Macri. Rico Abreu comes to call. He works to the outside of Brad Sweet. Now to the inside of Anthony Macri. Two for the price of one right there on lap number 11 for Rico Abreu. He's up to fourth. Macri crosses back underneath him. Macri takes the fourth spot at the line, but Abreu works back to the inside. Macri will drive around him. Larson with about an eight car length to lead over the 88 of Thorson as Brad Sweet and Rico Avery continue to duke it out for that fifth position. Sweet's got it now. Hafer team and Corey Day right behind him going at it as well as Spencer Baston. Traffic up ahead once again for your race leader, Kyle Larson. The first car he will encounter is the 16T of Kevin Newton. Newton runs the bottom, not in Larson's lane. Here's the race for about seventh. There goes Corey Day underneath of Sam Hayford Team Jr. And Corey Day is going to make his way back into the seventh position. Tanner Thorson and Cole Macedo. I would say they're about the same speed right now as your race leader, Kyle Larson. We'll check the lap times this time by Larson at a 15-0. Tanner Thorson, 14-8. Cole Macedo, 14-7. Second and third. Closing in on your race leader. Heavy traffic in front of Larson. Larson's got Connor Morrell, Jacob Allen, and Austin McCall right in front of him. Here comes Tanner Thorson down the front straightaway. Tanner Thorson working on Kyle Larson as they work down the back stretch. Thorson took another three tenths off the lead of Larson last time by. This time by, eight laps to go for Larson. Kyle Larson now right in the back pocket of Austin McCarl. Where's he going to go? Jacob Allen is on the bottom as well. Larson's got to make a big move here. He's going to open up the top side of the racetrack. Tanner Thorson might have a run down the front straightaway. Thorson does. Does he make a move into turn number one? He looks low. Here comes Cole Messino as well. Three car battle for the lead of East Bay. Thorson is going to take the lead for a moment down the back straightaway. Kyle Larson shuts the door on him, slides up the racetrack. Thorson to the inside, looking for the lead off of turn number four. Great stuff at the front. Now Cole Messino's trying to make it a three wide battle for the race lead. Tanner Thorson back to the inside off of turn number two. This time by five laps to go. Larson, what a move to get by Austin McCarl. Wow. Kyle Larson, a big move. That might be the winning move. They get by the 88 of Austin McCarl through turns three and four. Larson now gets by Jacob Allen, gets by Chris Windham as well. Thorson struggling to get through the lap traffic. Thorson slides in front of McCarl, who crosses back to the inside. And now Thorson still has to deal with the 88 car to turn number one. Brad Sweet's now back up to fourth. He gets by Anthony Macri, and all of a sudden's on the back bumper of Cole Macedo. This time by three laps to go for Kyle Larson. The young Money trying to win the first race of the season with the High Limit Racing Series. As he works on Casey Kane and trying to go to the, put him a lap down to turn three. Thorson still solidly in that second position. There goes Corey Day trying to crack into the top five. The 18-year-old makes it by Anthony Macri for fifth. Macri back to the inside down the front stretch. Abreu's there as well. Three wide for a moment for fifth into turn number one. This time by the white flags out for the white 57 of Kyle Larson. Thorson still second. Macedo still third. Back straight away for the final time. 
top side of the racetrack. The last time he was at East Bay, he went to victory lane. He'll do it again. He wins the Battle of the Bay. It's Kyle Larson. Second goes to Tim. Across the line, Cole Mazzino bounced off the wall and got by Tanner Thorson to take second at the line. Cole Macedo second, Tanner Thorson third, Brad Sweet fourth, and Anthony Macri in fifth. Holy cow, the move from Cole Macedo. Your finishing order after 25 laps of action, Spencer Baston in 10th, Sam Averteep Jr. ninth, Brent Marks in eighth, Rico Abreu, Corey Day, Anthony Macri, Brad Sweet, Tanner Thorson, Cole Macedo, and your winner out of Elk Grove, California, Young Money, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson has made his way to Whiskey Myers Victory Lane. He wins the first race of the season with the High Limit Racing Series. Climbing out of the Falcons Brothers Trucking 57, owned by Paul Silva and Silva Motorsports. Gets the Hoosier Tire neckband. He'll get the High Limit Racing Series Victory Lane hat. Audrey and Owen already making their way to the top of the wing where they've spent a lot of time here over the last couple of years. And here he is, race fans. How about it? Your winner at the Battle at the Bay at East Bay Raceway Park, Young Money, Kyle Larson. He'll climb off the top of the wing, make his way around the front of the Finley Farms 57 and get a word with Tony Laporta. Kyle Larson victorious in 2023, three times with the High Limit Racing Series, picked up the championship, and he gets the job done here on night number one, sort of, at Battle at the Bay. Owen's getting better at getting on top of that wing than you are. Are you going to, like, slow him down anyway doing that? Well, he, he, needs to, uh, he needs to be able to win some races, get on his own wing here soon this year. So um, put the pressure on him. But um, great racetrack there. Glad we're able to race tonight. You know, a lot of times uh, when we get rain, it just, uh, you end up just canceling that show. So, you know, thanks to everybody on the staff here at High Limit to uh, figure out a way to, to get us to run two races tonight. So, I hope we can get the track you know, back in shape for uh, the next, you know, next night's show. Um, it was an awesome, awesome track there. It started to take a little bit of rubber there into three up top, but uh, all in all, a good race, great race. Um, I got kind of blocked, not blocked, but just my momentum you know, kind of stalled out there in traffic, and uh, I seen Tanner's nose in one and two, and I was getting nervous because, you know, Jacob was down there, and he started kind of inching away from us, and then I seen Tanner at that point and uh, had to get up on the wheel and um, get past, I think, McCarl pretty quickly. Once I did that, I was able to get kind of rolling again, so uh, great race car. Um, traffic was definitely difficult. You know, as soon as I could start seeing guys straight away in front of me, uh, my, my grip went away, so... Uh, I don't know if it was the small wicker bills tonight or, or whatever that is, but uh, it, it was definitely different. So um, got to uh, figure that out. But uh, all in all, a great night. Um, thanks to everybody in this race car for you know, getting us out here. You know, Night one for the 57 um, this year. And to get a win feels great against a tough field. OK, I got to ask you, because a lot of people have talked to me about this. You and Brad getting high limit off the ground, and, and not just off the ground, but going national. 59 races here in 2024. You got your day job, the Daytona 500 with NASCAR Cup Series coming up later this week. And you got a family. Man, how crazy has this offseason and the start of 2024 been for you? And how do you negotiate all of it on top of driving this 57 as hard as you do? Well, thankfully, there's a lot of great people in place uh, with high limits, so I, I really don't have to do much stressing out. You know, it's everybody else. So uh, Brad especially, Hess, JP, Kendra, uh, Wikipedia, everybody. So um, there, there's a lot of people, a lot of great, great people that uh, have a lot of experience and, and can you know, get the job done throughout the off season to uh, put on a great show for your fans. So love seeing the crowd here uh, so far tonight, and uh, hopefully we can put on another good race. So thank you guys, and uh, look forward to – you know, hopefully uh, get in victory a little bit more often. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 High Limit Racing season starts with Kyle Larson in victory lane. We're going to find our second place driver here. Tanner Thorson looked phenomenal. He's looked phenomenal so far through uh, what we got through yesterday. Oh, Cole Macedo, that's right. It was so close at the line that a lot of people, myself included, didn't know you got the second place finish. Cole Macedo. 
Roofing company on the car last year. Great roofing company on the car this year. You've been fast yesterday through today after having hit the pause button and that race with Tanner in the last five laps. Tell me about how tough that was and did you really think you'd have something for it? Yeah, I, I mean, I felt really good from the, really since we unloaded. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about these guys. Uh, they all been working hard and uh, with my two cents and theirs, uh, we put together a game plan and, and it's been fast. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, you know, we got to the traffic there and I'm like, man, I see Kyle. And usually when you can see him, you're doing something right. So, um, yeah, I just got racing with Tanner there. He kind of peeled off and hit the bottom. I seen the opening there at the last corner and, and shot the gap. It, I kind of bounced off the fence and bounced off to him to get there. But, um, yeah, I might, I, maybe that was a bad idea. It could have ended bad, but luckily it didn't. And, uh, yeah, I just can't say enough about this uh, Honest Abe, uh, second law motorsports team. Um, I, I think my car owner had the best interview ever last night. Uh, some like 8444 Abe now or something like that. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, like he said, go buy some roofs and uh, keep us out here at the racetrack. As Chase Rodman already told you, yesterday was Abraham Lincoln's birthday. You did him proud. Good job, Cole. Thank you. I, d I didn't honestly know that. Chase dug that up. Tanner, you've been fast all day. You had to hit the pause button last night after we got, you know, about halfway through the show. I talked to some crew chiefs, some car guys, some car chiefs, and some drivers. I didn't get a chance to talk to you. How hard is it when you have to hit the pause button on a night like that, especially when you have a car that was as fast as yours today? Yeah, I think it takes a little bit out of it, you know, especially out of your sales, your, you know, men your mental mental side of it, too. So, um, you know, I just first off, I got to thank Rod Gross and his wife, Nancy. They uh, gave me an opportunity to come come live my dream and do this, and I know they're out there watching, and it's, I got to say thank you to them guys. They're, uh, you know, they put a lot of time and money into this thing to to allow us to come out and have fun and um, you know we just missed it a little bit there but we'll uh, go back regroup and I got Lee Lindgren back out here with me and um, uh, he's the best in the business so I um, just got to give him the, the the platform to show it on and uh, we're here so third place to start the high limit racing season you're a high roller you're going full time with us and not to add any pressure you got to make a little bit extra money this year because you and Shaley had a big announcement yeah definitely you know we got one on the way so that's pretty cool and um, it definitely makes you want to win uh, win some more money Tanner Thorsten in third place, Cole Macedo in second, and your winner, Kyle Larson. Chase, race number one of the high limit racing season here in 2024. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself.